Hey guys, this is, oh, am I on screen? This is Lisa Simone Richards here from lisasimonerichards.com. And I'm here with Karen. Now we're on. For a second, I saw a dark screen, but now I see us both. So that is Good. awesome. So I'm here with my friend, Karen Pattis. And I'm so excited to be chatting with her today because I know a bunch of you health, fitness, and wellness entrepreneurs are all using Facebook to be able to get in front of your customers and to obtain new clients and to build that know, like, and trust factor. So that is why we are letting you guys in on a sneak peek or a little sneak peek behind the scenes conversation with Karen and I. So Karen, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, Lisa, thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. I always love chatting with you. And for those of you who are tuning in who may not know me yet, I'm Lisa Simone Richards. I'm a PR and visibility strategist for health, fitness, and wellness entrepreneurs who want to get seen, get clients, and get paid. So now that I'm talking with Karen, I'm going to let her tell you, tell you, oh, uh, I'm going to let Karen tell a little bit about herself. There we go. Those are the words that I was trying to say. <laughs> but I also want you guys to take advantage of the fact that Karen is here. Like you can ask her questions. So I see some of you guys are on live right now. Please pop a question for Karen in the comments below, because this is one of the few times you can actually get to pick her brain. So Karen, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah. I, so my name is Karen Paddock and I teach coaches how to use webinars to grow their email list. And, oh, hi, Dagmar, uh, and to make sales for their programs, both. So I um, actually, I am from KarenPaddock.com. I feel like, am I coming through okay? Cause, because yeah. it keeps glitching. That's why I'm like hesitating. Is it okay? Oh, it's coming on perfectly on my Okay, side. good. Good, good, good. Okay. So like I said, I, te how, I teach coaches how to use webinars to grow their email list and to sell their programs and services. Uh, in that, I definitely focus a lot on Facebook as far as marketing those webinars and actually growing their email list as well. So it's kind of a joint effort between webinars and Facebook, email list growth, and selling your programs and services. Okay, so I might sneak in a question about webinars towards the end then. Yeah, definitely. So I know all of us are on Facebook. I'm willing to guess that most of the people who are tuning in, similar to myself, are playing around with Facebook ads, doing Facebook Lives. You know, I think a challenge that a lot of entrepreneurs are facing is that, you know, when we're building our pages, our groups, and, you know, maybe we can talk about the difference between the two in a few seconds as well, mm -hmm. is that it seems like when you just start doing your marketing on Facebook, you have your friends and your family who, like, give you likes and shares and stuff. And that's amazing. And thank you so much for the support, guys. We love you. Yeah, but we yeah. really want to get in front of our ideal customers. Customers. So sure. how do we start doing that in a strategic way on Facebook so it's more than just our friends and family? So I'm going to be really honest with you. It's definitely more complicated and harder now than it used to be because Facebook is a business. And I'm sure if anyone's been in business for very long, they've seen the difference in organic reach and what their page can do. And I'm glad you brought up the difference between a page and a group because there is a big difference. Um, so the strategy really is starts off from Facebook and getting really, really clear on who your ideal client is. And, and honestly, getting ready to talk about this topic, it's kind of a web. So I, I'm going to do my best to cover and make sure everyone gets the full picture. But first and foremost, get dialed in on who your ideal client is so that when you are on Facebook, you are getting in front of the right audience. And if you're coming at this from the standpoint of, I just want to be general, I want to be generic, I'm not sure, pick a path because generic and general on Facebook doesn't work. And if you are spending money on paid Facebook ads, you're going to waste your money. So I'm very passionate about people knowing their target audience before they're spending money on Facebook ads. And I know that's something you and I have talked about before, Karen. I feel like Everyone I speak to in the industry always focuses on the importance of, you know, niching down and really being clear on who that ideal client is. I, I really think that most um, programs, freebies, everything you come across nowadays, it always starts with that foundational step. So it's not something that we can overlook for sure. And that mm -hmm. applies to marketing on Facebook, whether it's paid or organic as well. Absolutely. 100%. And the thing is, Facebook is they've just uh, announced, I think it was last month, that they have over two billion users now. So the platform has grown so big that, again, if you're just talking generically, you're not going to be seen. 
Um, and I and I seriously used to recommend to my clients, take your time, figure it out. And and I guess I still want you to be clear on a path. It doesn't mean it's cemented in stone forever. But again, before you start spending money on Facebook advertising, get dialed in and know where those clients, what pages those clients are liking so that you can target those in your ads. And okay, so what would you say is a good way to find that out? Because I think a lot of us might think really linear in terms of, okay, you know, demographics. She's a female right. between 33 and 35 yeah. who like, tell me a little bit maybe about the psychographics we should be considering too, because I think a lot of people don't necessarily consider their ideal right. client watches The Bachelor. Right, right. So I, I like actually coined the phrase marketable ideal client because an ideal client, the way we used to define it, like you said, a woman between this age and this age, she has three kids, she lives in this area, she does whatever, right? Isn't deep enough to be marketable, meaning you can get in front of her. You need something, some tidbit that actually allows you to get in front of her. So think in terms of, are you teaching a, or are, is your coaching about hormones? Now that's something that on Facebook, there are pages all about hormones and, and different supplements for hormones and clothing for women that sweat at night, right? So now suddenly this person, you, you're finding her because you're finding the places that she would be hanging out. Same thing um, if you're gonna if you're gonna coach and you want to teach a certain way of eating, maybe you choose the paleo way of eating. Now there's paleo pages. There's certain products, right, that you can buy certain protein bars that are paleo specific that you can start targeting. Now that's a very dialed in audience. Not every single person is going to like those pages. You know, like you said, The Bachelor. It could be anything or The Bachelorette, right? So it's it's you need to find that marketable piece that allows you to get in front of them that isn't Oprah magazine or, you know, Home and Garden magazine or The Bachelor. It's got to be deeper than that. Does that make sense? It absolutely makes sense. So I think there's kind of I, I want to really dive deep today. I think um, sometimes I ask a lot of surface questions, but today I think I want to take the advantage to like really hone in on one topic with you. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that topic of the number one way to get customers on Facebook so that right. the people who are watching live or on the replay can actually take something away and implement it and see success with it. But before I ask you that, Karen, one thing I am dying to know and just really have a better understanding of, because we mentioned it briefly, yeah. is what is the difference between pages and groups? Because there's a lot of talk about groups these days and groups mm -hmm. shutting down. Like, how do we use them differently? I personally will acknowledge that I feel like I share a lot of this, a lot of similar content on both, and I'm not sure if I should be differentiating it. Well, not necessarily differentiating it, but from the standpoint of what Facebook is allowing us to do, Pages are not getting us what they used to get us. So pages are great for sharing your blog posts and maybe some inspirational posts. And you absolutely have to have a business page in order to do paid advertising, which I'm a huge proponent of ad paid advertising. Um, the difference is people aren't really hanging out on pages as much. They like it. They, you know, some of the bigger, more well-known celebrities or brands that people might go to those pages, but groups are really gaining popularity and Facebook is helping that happen, right? So Facebook recently announced a whole bunch of changes that are coming for groups. They've announced that uh, we're gonna be able to have analytics now in our groups. Like we've always had on our page, we now will get it in our groups, right? I noticed just yesterday morning, I was posting in my group and all of a sudden a little blue box popped up and said, you can, start, you can start scheduling in advance posts inside groups. Now I was going onto a mastermind call and the two ladies I was talking to didn't have that yet, but it's coming and that, and so there are all these great things that are coming. There are gonna be ways to approve people for your groups in batches. We mm -hmm. now have the option, I don't know if you've noticed, but you can do, you can create some screening questions for people coming to your group ahead of time. So Facebook is really going all in on groups for a lot of reasons. 
um, just like they're going all in on video, just like we're doing here. I mean, the things that are coming down the line for video with Facebook is going to be incredible for business owners. So our opportunity with Facebook is really shifting. Um, this is honestly a very different conversation than I thought we were going to have. And I like it. It, so the, we have to kind of really go with the flow where Facebook is going with the platform, because if we stay stuck in what used to be, we're going to have terrible results as business owners and marketers. We have to start thinking in terms of, okay, where's Facebook going? What do they want to focus on? Well, they really want to focus on groups and they really want to focus on video. They really want to take over that video market. And I've heard from a really um, reputable source that the one, the one thing Facebook is really going for in the next 12 months is to create an actual television app so that we will then be able to access Facebook and all the video, like we do YouTube, right? Right on our televisions. So that's a game changer. We, you know, they're probably going to be adding in webinars with the ability to do webinars right through the platform. I mean, it's very, very exciting. They, yes, they're, they're focused on a social experience, but they're also focused on us as business owners. Okay, awesome. So definitely advantages to having both a group and a page. But some of those things that you mentioned that are coming to groups, I was not aware of. Yeah, so I'm definitely cheering in the background with the idea of being able to schedule some content um, and flush that out with some live stuff as well. So definitely thank you for the sneak preview on that. So yeah, we kind of veered off in a way that we didn't think we were going today. But let's swerve right back to kind of where okay. we originally want to take this conversation. And then yep. let's just kind of really flush it out over the next few yep. minutes. Yep. So what we're going to dive into today is, Karen, just tell us, what is the number one way for us to get customers on Facebook? So I want you, again, to think in terms of being a business owner, right? Facebook is a great place for you to get in front of people, but it's not a great place for you to actually sell or, quote unquote, get a client. There's a couple of steps in here that you need to take. The biggest thing I want you to think in terms of with this, how to get clients from Facebook is get them off from Facebook and onto your email list. Maybe that's initially driving them to a blog post on your website, right? Which is a great thing for your page and your group for you to be posting simultaneously. <clears throat> but if you're thinking in terms of build your email list, nurture that email list, make a offer to that email list, right? Then you'll start making sales and getting clients. So there is a process. Facebook, you can't, I mean, it's just not a great platform to go on there cold and expect people to just, oh, I have a detox or, oh, I have this coaching program. And they're going to jump on and say, yes, they don't know you yet. They need to get to know you. And you do that through bringing them onto your email list and nurturing that relationship and then making consistent, regular offers. And I think there's something to be said for the fact that we have to be mindful that nobody cares about our businesses as much as we do. Sure. And that when people come on Facebook or any social media platform, it's for the fact to be social. Exactly. So we really work on engaging with them because they didn't log on to Facebook today thinking about what can I buy when I go on Facebook. They came exactly. on to interact in some way, shape or form. Right. Exactly. So Go ahead. Oh, sorry. So I was going to say, if I'm hearing you correctly, then the number one way to get customers off of Facebook is to drive them towards your email list. Right, right. So actually, today, with that in mind, I actually came up with five ways with Facebook that you can drive people to your email list. Okay, right. let's talk about it. Go there next. Yep. Okay, so Facebook has um, a built in tool, if you will, that's like a giveaway or a contest. So there, if you go right to your help category on Facebook and type in giveaway or contest, they'll give you the step by step instructions on how to set that up. Um, you can also Google a Facebook giveaway or contest. Mm -hmm. and, and there are lots of articles out there that will give you examples of what does that giveaway look like? What can you give away? And, and there are some rules and regulations with Facebook that you need to be careful of. So pay attention to what Facebook has to say, but it's a great way to collect names and emails, okay? Um, another way is to do a challenge. Uh, 
the offer that we're going to offer today is a challenge, right? So they're pretty easy to put together. Usually if you do a five-day challenge for your audience, something super simple, baby steps every day, right? And people get excited about challenges because they know that in a very short period of time, they're going to accomplish something. So that again is a great way on Facebook, if in your group and on your page, you are promoting a challenge, you have something to offer, and it's something different than just your regular freebie, right? So of course your regular freebie is another way. You know, the thing, people say they're not growing their email list, but they're not, they're not consistently promoting it either. We can't count on people to just, you know, magically make it to our website and then happen to see our free offer. And, and we have to be proactive about it. So we have to set up a schedule where consistently, I would say three to five times a week, we're posting on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, you know, wherever you are hanging out or your ideal clients are spending time, make a concerted effort, a proactive effort to promote. That's how you're going to grow your email list. It's not going to happen magically. So that's three. The fourth one is an online summit. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa, I know you know all about that, right? Great <laughs> list builder, super great list builder. And Facebook is very, um, it's a great platform for that because really a summit is a low barrier to entry. There's a theme around it. People get excited. They want to get behind it. There's a lot of chatter with it. I think you created a Facebook group around yours, right? So it, it's a big deal and no one wants to be left out and, it, and no one feels like, Ugh, you know, I'm going to be sold to. They feel like there's a lot of valuable information on a certain topic coming their way. It makes them excited. They're part of a community. Um, and then you can carry that on, like I said, and nurture that relationship after the challenge. And then the last one would be really what we're doing here. Facebook live streaming, right? You can do it through a platform like Be Live or Zoom like we're doing here, or you can do it directly on Facebook, the platform, right? And it, short of just getting over your own fear of jumping in and getting in front of a camera, and it just takes practice, it just takes practice, uh, it, it, it's a great way if you're consistent. I have a client or had a client, I should say, that last December she started Facebook Lives once a week. And now here in August, um, she is gangbusters. She sells, uh, she actually is a coach and sells essential oils and she's doing amazing. We're actually going to interview her on the Wellness Business podcast uh, as a case study because it's just a great, uh, confirmation that Facebook Live really works. And then the bonus, I guess I have six, is paid Ooh, advertising. Nice. Paid advertising. So those were all free. But, you know, again, I'm a believer in paid advertising. If you're going to have a business, there's it's just part of the equation. You need to, even if it's just $5 a day, it makes a significant difference in the amount of people that are on your email list and the amount of people that buy your programs, products, and services. So it just needs to be part of the equation. Thinking you can start a business and come in and never spend any money on advertising is really a setup for failure. So however you need to work it, even if it's just $5 a day, um, you know, give up one Starbucks coffee or whatever you need to do in order to make that happen. I'm so happy that you shared that tip because I know a lot of the people who are a part of my tribe and community have all been in business for about under six months. And yeah. of course, you know, you and I are both entrepreneurs. So we see, you know, the value in needing yeah. to be very smart and strategic in how we spend our dollars. It's not like mm -hmm. back in the corporate days where we had $300,000 budget, no big deal. Right. But exactly. that, it's, it's a theme that I'm seeing a lot. We can't be afraid to invest in our businesses because a lot of the time we get surprised when our spouses or our friends see our business as a hobby right. and want them to see it as a business, but mm -hmm. we are not treating it like a business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's really a mirror for how we're treating our own corporations. You know, and so many of these health coaches have spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to just get their certification. And then, you know, I don't know if it's just being naive or, if it's partly, you know, the way they're taught through the certification, 
But the truth is, it, it's a competitive space. Never before have we had the opportunity to do our own advertising. You know, go back in time before Facebook, we, you would have to hire a marketing agency, right? You would do direct mailers or you would do uh, Google ads. I mean, we would not have the ability to make this, uh, you know, make advertising happen for ourselves. But now, I mean, it is a competitive market, so we have to get dialed in and we need to pay for our advertising. But on the other hand, it's the first time in history as small business owners, we have the opportunity to do it ourselves and make an impact, a significant impact. It's exciting. It's just really exciting. Literally, as you said it, I just got goosebumps and lit up yeah. a little bit. It's just so cool what we have the ability to do. Oh, Dagmar, I see you're jumping off, but thank you so much for joining us today. Thank I'm you. Excited you on live and if you have any questions leave them for us because I'll be checking throughout the week um yeah Karen what you were saying just gave me shivers because 10 years ago this would yeah. would have been but a dream you know who knows we're going to be 10 years from now but let's enjoy where we are in the moment and take advantage of it and remember yeah we do have to make an investment and you make it sound really manageable five dollars a day like mm -hmm. that is doable for sure. I mean, it just has to be part of the equation. And I know a lot of people, like you said, are battling spouses that, you know, it's kind of like, show me the money and then you, but it's the catch 22, what comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? Without that advertising. And again, I'm going to go back to what we started with, dial in on your ideal client before you start spending that money, but don't get stuck in that spot. Don't get paral paralyzed either. Pick a path. And you can always tweak it later. You can. I'm still tweaking my business this very day, right? Just this year, I finally claimed I'm going to teach webinars. Like I have been doing it with my private clients for years now. It's been a big part of my private coaching program. And I thought, why not add that or really lead with it in my marketing? And so tweaking your business should be part of it. It should be evolving as you work with clients and find out more what you like and what you're good at and results from your clients. and and just keep moving forward. Don't be afraid. I totally agree with that. Sometimes perfectionism and the need of wanting to do it right the first time can hold us back so much. And I was talking with a private client yesterday, sharing the story of, sure, things look a certain way right now in my business, but the evolution that it took to get here, like what worked, yeah. what didn't work, the different messaging and branding. And anyways, yeah, so always don't be afraid to evolve, essentially. So yeah, I'm going to ask sure. you one more question before we start to, you know, wrap it up. So okay. to bring it all home, yeah. if our viewers could take one actionable strategy after watching our conversation, what do you think is the first thing that they should do so that they can have a win? Absolutely get dialed in on their ideal client. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, everything else happens after that, right? What freebie we create, what ads we recreate, what, where we're targeting, where we're looking for I, I, our ideal clients, every blog post we write, every marketing piece we create. I mean, it all starts with who am I speaking to? Who do I want to support? Who do I want to help? And until we really know that and, and uh, commit to something, but again, don't be afraid to tweak it down the road, we have to get to that space before we do anything else because everything else will become so much easier once you have that dialed in. It's like night and day. Amazing. Okay. So guys, tip number one, perfect client clarity. So that's what you're going to take away today. And Karen, one thing I want to ask you about is I know that you have a new project in the work that you mentioned earlier. So for those of those of the viewers who may have been under a bit of a rock and don't know what's going on yet. Tell us all about it. So are we talking about the challenge or are we talking about the podcast? We're we talking about the podcast. Okay, the podcast. So yeah, I'm excited to mention that. So just at the beginning of July, I am co-hosting a podcast designed specifically for health and wellness entrepreneurs with my good friend, Lagris. And it has been a huge success. It's called the Wellness Business Podcast. And you can find us at the wellnessbusinesspodcast.com or if you, you have a podcast app, just search for the Wellness Business Podcast. Uh, yeah, we are, uh, what, what is today? The 27th. And by the end of today, we should be at 10,000 downloads already. So 
incredible success. It's been, a, I, we, the feedback has been phenomenal. We are just blown away to tell you the truth. It's been good. And there is so many good episodes coming. Yeah, we have so many already finished, like through September, I think. So it's amazing. Tons of good stuff coming. And it's such a great show. I remember the Saturday morning that I saw the notification that it went live. I was cleaning my condo and I just binge listened like episode <laughs> one, two, three. I always look forward to when I get the little notification from my Stitcher app, I'm on Android, that it says that a new episode is there. So guys, if you haven't listened to it yet, totally tune in. You guys are on my favorite list. Well, and then thank also, you. Yeah, you guys are phenomenal. I just love listening to the two of you. It actually, um, Kathleen is going to be joining me next Thursday. Oh, so great. I'm excited to have half of the Wellness Business Podcast today and the other half next week. So perfect. So That's Karen, great. I know that you have a little something, something to help everyone out who's taken the time to watch this video today so yeah. that they can get better with Facebook. So tell us a little bit about what they have in store for them. Yeah, so it's a five day Facebook email list building challenge. So it's super simple, super easy. Once you sign up, it's actually, you'll get one email a day for five days with something that you can implement on Facebook within 10 minutes. So literally you can go through the content and implement within 10 minutes. So over the course of a week, less than an hour, and these things really make a difference. These are the things that dial you in on Facebook so that if someone is visiting your page, they know who you are, they know who you serve, they know what you do, they know that they're in the right place, and then they wanna know more. So uh, you can get that at, I think it's on the screen, karenpaddock.com forward slash FB challenge. More than 2,500 people have gone through that and I have had a ton of great feedback. Um, it's just super simple, super easy to implement, anyone can do it. And I encourage you to go jump in there and check it out and get your Facebook profile, page, group, all of your whole branding on Facebook dialed in. And guys, this is such a great challenge. I can speak to having done it personally myself, um, if I can be super honest with you, Karen. So I signed up for the challenge, yeah. and I think I let days one, two, and three build up in my inbox, and I specifically remember it was like 11 o'clock at night. I was going to go to bed soon, but I was like, let me watch video number one. And then I did that, but then I watched number two immediately after and three, because it was so good. And yeah. I love that you make it like there's, it's almost overwhelming how much content there is out there these days. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you've made each video less than 10 minutes, just, you know, it's not a huge imposition into my day, but I actually take something really mm -hmm. specific and implementable out of it. So right. this is a good way for you guys who are, you know, brushing up your Facebook pages and groups to just spruce them up a little bit more. Thanks to Karen's amazing tips. Yeah. They definitely made a big difference for me. Great. I love hearing it. Thanks, Lisa. You did a great job with it. Thank you so much, Karen, for joining us today. And thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, if there are any experts you want to see me bring on or questions that you have, please leave them in the group for me. And again, make sure you check out Karen's challenge because it was ridiculously helpful and it will definitely make a difference for you too. So we will see you next Thursday. And Karen, thank you again. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Have a good day, guys.